the ghost life ended so they can rest in peace. Hi, it's Tarrant and Stella from the Dice Tower How to Play Video Series. In this video, we will teach you Paranormal Detectives, game designed by Shimon Malinsky, Adrian Oshakovsky, and Martin Wonczynski, and published by Lucky Duck Games. Let's get to the table. Paranormal Detectives is a party game for two to six players. One player plays as the ghost, and through the game delivers a series of specific styles of clue to try to lead the detective players to uncover the circumstances of the ghost's death. The first detective to recreate the story of the ghost's death wins the game. To set up the game, choose one player to be the ghost, and the rest will be the detectives. Each detective takes an investigation sheet, a whiteboard marker, a privacy screen, and the investigator cards showing that character in the top corner. Remove any cards that do not correspond to your player count, remembering to include the ghost in that count. The ghost player takes the ghost sheet, a whiteboard marker, and the three ghost cards. Then place the main board and the rest of the components in the centre of the table. Next, the ghost chooses a story. This can be done either by drawing a card from the story deck, or by picking a story from the app. Stories can be chosen by title, or chosen at random. If you're playing with young children and want to make sure the story stays family friendly, avoid any cards or stories showing this icon. To avoid spoiling any of the stories that come with the game, in this video we're going to use this story that we wrote ourselves. Feel free to use this one for your own explanations, we've put a link to the story in the description below. The ghost should read the card silently, not revealing its information to the detective players. I was a little bit behind doing my videos as YouTube content creator. I was at home in the game room and I needed urgently to film a video about a new board game Kingdom Rush. But it was on the top shelf. In my haste, I grabbed the nearest ladder, not realising the steps were loose. As I got to the game, the ladder slipped from under me and I fell to the floor. Shelves and games tumbling all over me. The last thing I saw was the Kingdom Rush box as it hit me straight between the eyes. The detectives are ultimately aiming to recreate the five key elements of the story. Who was responsible for the death, why it occurred, where it happened, how it occurred, and what was the weapon or object related to the death. In each case, there will usually be a few different words relating to each of these key points and the detectives need to guess only one of each, or an obvious synonym, to get it correct. Finally, the information on this strip at the bottom of the card is revealed to the detectives. Place wound tokens on the chalk outline corresponding to the card, and one on one of these two icons to indicate the sex of the deceased. Then the ghost reads aloud this text describing the appearance of the body. Choose a first player, and you're ready to play. To play the game, players will take it in turns to ask a question of the ghost, and then optionally try to solve the mystery. This continues until either one player has guessed all five elements of the mystery correctly, or until all players have run out of question cards. On your turn, you'll start by asking the ghost a question. This can be any question, except for one which would yield a yes or no answer. Often, you'll be simply asking one of the five major questions in the mystery. For example, who killed you? But, later in the game, when you already have some information, you might try to ask something more specific, such as, where does the person who killed you work? Then, choose and discard one of the interaction cards that remains in your hand. This tells the ghost the manner in which that question must be answered. There are nine different interaction cards in the game, and not all players will have access to all of the cards. The question is asked aloud for all players to hear, and the response, in most cases, will also be seen by all players. So now, let's look at how the ghost must respond to each. To answer using the ghost meter, the ghost may place up to three markers, onto this area in the bottom left corner of the board. This describes the answer on a series of sliding scales. The options you have are large to small, heavy to light, fast to slow, evil to good, loud to quiet, 
hot to cold, old to young, and then one scale giving you a series of colours. In our example, being hit by the falling Kingdom Rush box would be something that's relatively small, sort of middle weight, and approximately yellow in colour. To answer on the talking board, the ghost may place up to five of these markers pointing at these letter clusters to spell out an answer of up to five letters. The tokens must be placed to point only at the clusters of letters. It is not permissible to try to indicate which one of the letters in the cluster by pointing at a specific one. This could be used to spell out a whole word or part of a word. Whatever the ghost thinks will best lead the players towards the answer. To answer with the hangman's knot, the ghost arranges these two ropes into a shape. It's not allowable to spell out letters, numbers or words, but any other shape is valid. When answering with the Whisper of Shadows, the ghost silently mouths one word for all players to see. To answer via the Haunted Mirror, the ghost does a brief pantomime lasting up to three seconds and again remaining silent. To answer using the tarot cards, the ghost takes this deck of 17 simplified tarot cards and may lay three of them on the table in any configuration to show the answer. This could include trying to tell the story with a sequence of cards, or using other cards to obscure certain details from one card that shows something you need. The ghost scream may be used to answer in one of two very different ways. Either by making a single sound, which does not resemble a word of any kind, Thum. or by pointing to a single object located in the room in which you're playing the game. When answering with the quill pen, the ghost may draw a picture using a single line, but must use the hand of the player who asked the question to draw that picture. Take the quill pen board. Then the question asker holds a marker in hand. The picture must be drawn in a single continuous line, and as soon as the pen is lifted from the page, either intentionally or inadvertently, then the drawing is finished. Once again, the ghost may not write letters, numbers, or words when doing this drawing. Finally, when answering with ghost touch, the ghost walks around behind the question asker and uses a finger to draw an image on that player's back. Once again, only shapes and pictures are allowed. The ghost cannot draw letters, words, or numbers when using ghost touch. Ghost Touch differs from all other types of answer in the game because this is only sensed by the player who asks the question. Opponents are not allowed to see the image that is drawn on the player's back. This means that in your quest to be the first to solve the mystery, Ghost Touch is your strongest asset as it is the only piece of hidden information that you can ever get during the game. As a reflection of this fact, You'll note that even though all players have different cards in their decks, all players will have Ghost Touch at all player counts. After the player has asked a question and then received an answer, that player may optionally attempt to solve the mystery. To do this, the player makes a guess on all five of the keys to the story. Who was responsible, why it happened, where it happened, how it happened, and what was the weapon or object. The player makes these guesses out loud for all other players to hear. The ghost then checks those guesses against the story card. A guess on one of the keywords is correct if it matches one of the words on the ghost's card or is an obvious synonym for one of those words. So for example here, Stella, YouTuber, content creator or online personality would all be valid answers, but TV host or Tarrant would both be wrong. If all five of the keys are correct, then that detective wins the game jointly with the ghost. 
The ghost only wins if one of the detectives guesses correctly, so it's in the ghost's interest to make the clues as effective as possible. If any of the keys are guessed incorrectly, then go through the following steps. Silently, and behind the player's privacy screen, the ghost writes down the number of keys which were correct in that guess. This means that the competing players will not know how close that guess was to being correct. Then, the ghost notes that number in that player's row of the next empty column on the ghost sheet. This keeps a record of all of the guesses made during the game. Each player is allowed no more than two guesses during the game. So if a player's second guess is wrong, then that player is out. The ghost must keep this sheet secret from all players. Then, for the first three incorrect guesses made during the game, the ghost gets to play a ghost card and then give an additional piece of information to all of the players using one of these three methods. The ghost chooses a card, discards it, and then gives a clue in that manner. None of the detectives gets to ask a question before the ghost gives this clue, and so the ghost may choose to either do something general that will help all players, or possibly give a specific clue to try to help out the player who just made the incorrect guess. If no players have guessed the answers correctly, then the game ends once all players are either out of cards or have made two incorrect guesses. If it ends in this way, refer to the ghost sheet keeping track of all of the incorrect guesses. Whichever player made the highest scoring guess throughout the course of the game is declared the winner. If there are multiple players tied, then whoever made that guess earlier in the game is declared the winner. The ghost wins jointly with the detective only if a detective makes a completely correct guess. If the game ends in this manner, then the ghost does not win with the detective. A couple of variations on play. If you are playing with two players, then one player will be the ghost and one will be the detective. And that detective takes 14 cards, representing the entire deck for two different characters. Naturally, the two player game is fully cooperative. And the players will either win or lose together by guessing all five portions of the story. In a similar vein, the multiplayer game can be played fully cooperatively. The questions and answers work the same way, however, the team now collectively has only two guesses to get the answers correct. The team then counts up a final score based on the total number of questions asked and total number of cards played. Finally, do note that the Ghost Touch and the Quill Pen card do require physical contact between players. If your group is not comfortable doing this, then simply remove those cards from the game ignoring the player count markers down the bottom, and replace them with others. Do be aware, however, that you will be removing the one piece of secret information that players can get from the game, making it a fully open game. And that's how to play Paranormal Detectives. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, please write them in the comment section below. Until next time. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.